The most hotly debated characteristic of big data is the use of machine learning. The fact that people say that big doesn't need to know why. There's no need for theory. There's no need to understand why things happen and how they happen. They just, you have enough big data and you just run machine learning algorithms to detect patterns, unsupervised learning algorithms on completely unlabeled data. For example, the, the, the epitome of this kind of challenge is translation. The artificial intelligence community was for a long time struggling with machine translation from one natural language to another natural language. Now, how they traditionally went about this problem was they used the same approach that we would use to teach a school uh, student uh, to learn a second language. So we trained the machine some grammatical rules, we taught the machine a lot of vocabulary and we say you can use this vocabulary according to these kind of rules. And it never worked. Machine translation was horrible for many years. Um, then Google came along and started to work with a completely different approach. They said, look, there are many documents that are translated already available in the internet. For example, the United Nations Secretariat has to publish all its official documents in five different languages. And these documents are all equivalent, translated by people. The Canadian government usually has official documents in French and in English, the European Union in many more languages. And there are many other languages on the internet with official trans translations. Um, so Google just said, we don't care about the underlying rules. We just let the algorithms loose on these equivalent documents and say, well, these documents are equivalent. Find some patterns. What has to do with what? And only if you have a lot, a lot of data, then machines are also able to find these kind of patterns. And only with a lot of data, machine learning techniques then also become very effective. With the result being that by now in Google Translate, you can translate more than a hundred languages, one to another. For example, here, I translated Suahili to Esperanto. Now, there's probably nobody in the world who speaks both Swahili and Esperanto because there are very few people on planet Earth who speak Esperanto. But for sure, there's nobody in Google who speaks Swahili and Esperanto. Actually, Google was always very proud of saying that they avoided to employ only one linguist. They said linguists only make trouble. They come with their theories about grammar. We're not interested in that. We just do machine learning, let the algorithms look for patterns. They don't make sense for us, these patterns, but they're highly effective. And with that, Google Translate basically solved the problem of machine translation in only a couple of years. For example, at the United Nations Secretariat, I was usually working in four different languages and I had to translate among them myself. Now with Google Translate, I don't do that anymore. I actually use the translating machine a lot. Afterwards, I correct it a little bit, but over recent times, I have to correct it always less and less. These machines have become incredibly good. And with that, machine learning solved the problem of translation between languages. Sometimes these machine learning algorithms, they know more about ourselves than we know ourselves about ourselves. Let me give you for an example. For example, Facebook likes can be used to automatically and accurately predict sexual orientation, ethnicity, religious and political views, personality traits, intelligence, happiness. The use of addictive substances can be inferred by just knowing your Facebook likes. Parental separation, the fact that your parents are separated can be induced just by knowing your Facebook life. Of course, age and gender and so forth. So, but just knowing the digital footprint of your Facebook likes, you can know a lot about you, your political views and so forth. Also your personality traits. So what they did now then is they, in another study, they gave uh, you a personality test really just a test that you filled out, a typical personality test that classified your personality. So you filled out all the questions. Then they gave the same test to your friends and say, fill out the test like you would fill it out. So your friends said, well, I think my buddy would say here this and here this and here this. Then they had your personality as a result of your test and how your friends think your personality is. And then they used the machine learning algorithms just to run over your Facebook likes. And it turns out that the machine predictions about your personality traits was closer to the result of your survey than what your friend thought your personality was. So actually machine algorithms know you better than your friends, most impressively as well. Afterwards, they asked the participants of the study, so 
What do you think? What's your personality like? Like, do you think you're actions driven, emotions driven? Tell me a little bit, like rate your personality just by, you know, like thinking how you did on this test. And it turns out that for some cases, the self-rated personality scores were less accurate compared to the results of the test than the machine learning algorithms were that just went through the digital footprint of your Facebook likes. As I said, in some cases, these machine learning algorithms, they know us better than we know ourselves.